by, everybody, as we turn the calendar back 500 years and bring you the 123rd running of the Canterbury Tournament at Blunderstone Castle. The weather is clear, the turf is fast, and it looks as if all attendance records will be smashed to smithereens this afternoon. Yes, sirree. Red on plum pudding, plum pudding, dear. Get your plum plum, dear, folks. You can't get one well, night from another without a plum plum. To the winner of this world-famous tournament today will go riches, honor, and glory, and the frail white delicate hand of the lovely Princess Esmeralda, fairest flower in all the kingdom. What a prize for stout-hearted knights to do and die for. And now we take you to the dressing room of the challenger, Sir Loinstake. Fourteen points of brawn, muscle, and courage, blonde and blue-eyed, ready to pit his strength against the champion for the heavyweight cast-iron slugging title of the British Empire. And here we have the little man who ever since early morning has been preparing his night for the big day. Introducing Cedric, the loyal and humble servant who dreams of some afternoon when he too will become a knight and face death for the smile of a lovely princess. <sighs> but today Cedric's duty is to see to it that his master is completely overhauled. Valves ground, new piston rings, brakes relined, body simonized and a complete change of oil. <laughs> moment is drawing close now. The crowd is on his toes and yelling for action. And we go into final preparations for the big event. The all-important last-minute touches that may very well snatch victory from defeat. Uh-oh, hurry, Cedric, hurry! Get rid of it, stupid, anywhere, under the rug. You've no time to lose. Before you can say Jack Robinson, the two sturdy gladiators will be out there. Hurry up, Cedric. Slugging it out for the championship. The betting is four to one in favor of the champion, but the challenger is going in there with all the confidence in the world, and there may be an upset if Saloin State can turn the tables. It's only a matter of seconds now before the two armor-plated contestants meet face to face on the field of honor. The last minute for... But wait, folks. Something's gone wrong here. Saloin State is out, completely out, a cold night. There's been a slip-up, and it looks as though the tournament may be off. But there's still Cedric. Look here, Cedric. You're in the armor now. Fate has smiled upon you. Lucky stiff. This is your big chance. Just imagine you, Cedric, can be a hero and win the glory, the riches, and the honor, to say nothing of the fair hand of the Princess Esmeralda. Think of it, Cedric. The chance of a lifetime. And now, coming out on the field, that night of night, circumference, the champion. Old Iron Pants, they call him. Never lost his seat in combat, but many a gallant knight has gone down to defeat neath the hoofs of his trusty war horse. And here we have the challenger. It's the loyal Cedric doubling for Saloin State, willing to do or die for his master. Or could it be the fair Princess Esmeralda? <laughs> Looks like love at first sight. With an inspiration like this, how could anyone fail? Easy there, Cedric. Easy does it. And now the knights and horses are in the starting gate. They're all ready. Battle stations, visors down, lances set. Any minute now. Although circumference the champion is the odds on favorite, ladies and gentlemen, anything can happen out here this afternoon, and probably will. The crowd is waiting for the starting signal. It's just a matter of seconds now. The fans are on their toes, and here they go! is going to the front, and here comes Cedric the challenger. Both boys are moving into the furious pace. It's going to be ghastly. They're moving closer now. Cedric is on the rail. Here's the champion. They're coming up to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> it's all over. It's all over. With circumference, the winner, and still champion. Bravo. Bravo. But just a minute, folks. Hold your horses. What's this? Yes, it is. Believe it or not, little old Cedric is in there again. What a fighting heart. And now the champion sets himself for another charge. There's the wind-up, the pitch, and the champion connects. It's a line drive going over third base. No, a long foul ball into the left field bleachers. But little Cedric is right back in there again. It's a hot night we have out there this afternoon. But the champion is on his toes, too, and that's a mighty fistful of sword he has there. And this time he means business. He's going in for the kill. Poor little old Cedric. This really looks like the beginning of the end, folks. No knight living could stand up under this powerhouse of 
It may be the kid's last ride, but he's right in there pitching. And he connects. What a sock this little fella packs. And the champ rocks back on his heels. Little Cedric sure sprung a surprise that time. But the champion is splashing back now with a right and a left, a right and a left. He's making every blow count. One, two, three, bow! No holds barred in this battle. There's a smashing right, and Cedric loses his head for a moment. But now the champion takes one on the noggin. The champ is taking a little more time now. He's lost a little bit of his confidence. This challenger is no green buff. He moves in and let's fly with a whirlwind attack. A left, a right, a left, a right, right, left, right, left. The champ is throwing everything he's got at him Cedric now. What's holding this kid up? He can't take this bombardment much longer. Why doesn't somebody stop this order? It just don't seem human. It's unbearable. There ought to be a law. Why, the whole suit will have to be scrapped, including Cedric. But wait, the champion seems to be tiring. Those sledgehammer blows are losing some of their steam. Champ is breathing hard now. And again, we take you back inside with Seth. Let me cool this boy. But wait, something's happening out there. Let's have a look-see. Could it be that old Iron Pants is beginning to weaken? Yes, he reels in his saddle. And it looks like he's going down. Yes, he's down, he's down! And that wraps it up, folks. The winner and new champion, little old Seth. Well, that's the way it goes, folks. Chump one day, champ the next. What a day for a night, and what a night for a day. This could be any town, anywhere, any time. Because here, just as everywhere else, one third of the population are Aquamaniacs. This is the documented case history of a typical Aquamaniac. We shall call him Mr. X. This is his home. But it wasn't always like this. Not so long ago, it was a well-kept, modest dwelling. Promptly at 7.30 every morning, Mr. X said goodbye to his family. Boy, boy! So long, Daddy. And left for work. Always walked, claiming the exercise kept him fit. But this was not altogether true. Secretly, Mr. X liked to walk by a place that sold boats. At first, it seemed harmless enough. But the human body is about two-thirds water. Some believe it's water on the brain that drives a man to boating. Not me, boy. I got willpower. I can take a boat or leave it. Hey, you give me one for the road. Ah, yes. Just one for the road. How those words have altered men's lives. Well, son, you're going to learn plenty about the briny blue. I'm going to teach you how to tie knots and show you all about seamanship. Gee, swell, Dad. Then I'm going to teach you how to water ski. <laughs> You lubbers! Hey, quit your pushing! Oh, 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 bite my binnacle! Sunday, sailor! What's the matter with you? Oh, hey, knock it off! Hey, Stand by to cast off, matey! Aye, aye, sir! Anchor's away! Well, 
Keel all me for a swap. Mr. X had much to learn about the ocean. For example, the effect salt water has on metal, etc., commonly called rust. Where you been, Pa? Uh, oh, just parking the car, son. The skis, Dad. Put them on. Uh, oh, uh, sure, son. And now you're going to see some real fancy skiing. All you gotta do is hang on. Skiers ready on the starting line. You're on the clock. Here's the countdown. Five. Come on, Dad, hurry. Four, we gotta get in the race. Three. Race? Two. What race? Now, wait a minute, son. Yeah!
Feel better, miss?
common cold is a tiny virus easily identified by his red nose. Although the virus wins few friends, he influences many people. Sometimes the average man seems to deliberately try to catch cold. I don't have a cold. Ah, now look, Geef. A cold is nothing to be sneezed at. Beat it! Poor Geef. An outcast from society, shunned by a cruel, cold world. <laughs> Hello? I feel awful. Where is everybody? Huddy, Clay, Bridget, Mabel's, dinner in icebox. Deserted! Deserted by the ones he loves the most in his hour of need, alone with his misery. A definite change has come over this man. He doesn't even look like himself. The top of his head feels like it's blowing up. He feels awful. But man has always been a fighter.
Hello. What are you doing home? I don't feel good. Am I ever glad to be home? My, my, what a day. I'm sick. Ooh, my feet are just simply killing me. There. That's better. I've got a cold. <laughs> Nosy Mrs. Ripsnoop. Did I ever give her the cold shoulder? She tried to tell me how I should follow suit. I bet you'd have enjoyed the game, the second rubber in particular. I drew the ace, queen, and a beautiful run of hearts. Loveliest hand I've ever filled. And you know the prize? Oh, I'm so meaningful. Heaven knows what I'll do with it. Well. But anyway, George. <laughs> George, are you listening? Huh? I'll bet you haven't heard a single solitary word I've been saying. Achoo! What on earth's the matter with I you? I got a cold. A what? Oh, you poor boy. Well, don't stand there like an idiot. Close that window. Bundled up. Get off that cold floor. Jump into bed. <coughs> Mama's little man don't feel so good. Uh, uh. Well, we'll take care of that. We'll break that old coal. <laughs> Mustn't get chilled. <laughs> Say ah. <laughs> you look feverish. Probably just getting a cold. Keep covered up. Nice warm mustard plaster, just the thing. Head. Now some nose drops. There. Feel any relief? Kind of woozy? This should do it. Ah, sleeping like a baby. So, two weeks later, Mr. Geef's cold had run its natural course. And once again, Mr. Geef felt like a human being. Mr. Geef was firmly convinced that a cold is nothing to be sneezed at. should start immediately sharing the responsibility for the child's upbringing. Baby visits grandma. Huh? 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Although the doting father sometimes doubts he will get through this trying period, the average man usually does, and even looks back with fond memories on such things as baby's first tooth, baby's first step, and baby's first word. Such things past, father feels at last he's earned his Sunday morning snooze. Oh, it's mine. I had it Give first. Give it back. I'll tell my pa. Tis. Tisn't. Tis. Tisn't. Tis. Tis. Her, her. Stop What's it. What's the matter with that kid of yours? My kid? Yes, yours. I made it free. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> George, come in and let the children play. After a hard day at the office, the tired father wends his weary way home. Junior! Danny! Oof! What'd you bring? <laughs> Bang! Ow! Oh! The child craves the companionship of his father. There we are. I don't like it. Ooh! Whoopee! Right up the Let her pop! She break a leg? Uh-huh. Wow! Playtime over, the tired father relaxes, knowing that his well-mannered child will respect Dad's leisure time mm. and allow father to read the news and smoke his favorite pipe. Junior, you keep your hands off my pipe. All right, Daddy. Play football, Daddy? No. Ah! Play cowboy Indian, Daddy? No. <laughs> Wanna play soldier? I said no. Wow. Junior, pick all those toys up. No. What? Didn't Daddy tell you to pick up your toys? Uh-huh. Well, pick them up then. No. The adult mind must cope with childish innocence and with superior intellect and ingenuity convince the child to obey. Uh-huh. Now, Junior, don't you pick up a single solitary one of those toys. All right, I won't. That's a good boy. Pick up your toys! No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! <laughs> George, stop growling at the boy. I'm not growling. You'll get nowhere arguing at his level. But he deliberately said... Oh, for heaven's sakes, use a little psychology. Is that fun, Daddy? Huh? I'll help you, Daddy. Ah, yes, father and son working as a cooperative team. There now. Wasn't that a lot of fun? Yes, Daddy. Wow! <laughs> Pretty funny. All right, Junior, time for bed. All right, Mommy. I'll teach that kid a thing or two. Where'd he go? Junior! Here I am, Daddy. Now, look here, young man. I'm going to not... Good night, Daddy. Well, what do you know? Look at that. Oh, well. Kids, they're wonderful. Ah, I wish I had a million of them. George, how does this look?
I'm a going to hunt some ducks, hunt some ducks, hunt some ducks. I'm a going to hunt some ducks for my fair lady. <laughs> I'm a little good morning. Diddle dum, doodle dee, the diddle dum, holy the diddle dum for my fair lady. <laughs> <laughs> the skies are loaded with them. <laughs> she works. Hey, where'd she go? Oh, there you are. Okay, Clementine, bring them in. <laughs> Huh? Something wrong here. Uh, somebody ain't telling the truth. Clementine?
The average man is born with an inborn urge to gamble. Take the case of Mr. G.G. Geef. Geef was never too busy to enjoy risking his hard-earned dough on the chance of making an easy buck. Football pool, George? You bet. It was a soft touch for the latest gambling fads of the moment. The chain ladder? The Chinese velocity? Join a pyramid club? Irish sweepstakes? Hey, George, not you for lunch. Okay, Joe. Gee, I won again. Thanks, George. At every turn, Mr. Geef met with opportunities to gamble. And loose change always burned a hole in his pocket. He was a pushover for a one-armed bandit. average gambling man is not easily discouraged. He feels his persistence will be rewarded and that opportunity awaits just around the corner. Ah, uh, come to Pappy. Hey, the from the gator. Yes. Be nice, Dice. Come here, Ooh. come here. Sure, Dice. Mr. Geef knows that when Lady Luck gives him the sign and the dice are hot, <coughs> then is the time to back it up with the old sock. Save me. Hey, you're you're painted. Painted. You know what got there? Oh, hum. Easy come, easy go. Taxi! <laughs> Mr. Geef is nobody's fool. Therefore, his winnings are always deposited in sound business investments. There they go. Occasionally, Geef's investments fail to pay off. But in spite of these financial fluctuations, the average man is a good loser. How you doing, George? Swell, Al. Just swell. Oh, fudge! Of all Gosh, the gambling oh. games, there was none Mr. Geef enjoyed as much as the cozy atmosphere and the congenial company of a friendly game of poker. Hi, you fellas. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, Ah, put up or shut up. Friendly greetings over, George Geef analyzes his opponent's hands by closely studying their subtle facial expressions. Of course, this strategy is a complete flop if the players happen to be wearing their poker faces. The player must be alert and quick to take advantage of every unseen opportunity. One must keep his eyes peeled even in a friendly game. <gasps> Play waxes hot. Uh, I raise. Raise again. I raise you. I call. The game becomes tense. Card. Two. Give me five. I'm pat. The stakes are high. Raise. App. Call. Your light. I bump you. But Mr. Geef's enjoying every minute of it. Raise you. Up four. Four and three more. Raise. Up another. Mm. Take it and bump two blues. I call. I call. What you got? Now then. Me too. Me too. Beats here. A pair of deuces? I thought you were bluffing. Break them in, George. Oh. Thanks, fellas. Lucky George Geef, the winner. Oh, my gosh. It's getting late. Cash me in. I gotta go. Uh, so, uh, uh, nah, he's a... Hey, George, what's the idea? George Geef, tonight is your lucky night. Now, if your luck holds out, you can sneak in without waking the little woman. 
the coast's clear. Easy does it. One false move and... George! Oh. What do you mean coming home at this hour? Take that! What do the neighbors Ouch. think? Sick friend fooling. You've been damned, oh. that's what. I work and oh. save and you just throw your money away. Think of all the bills we owe. Why, George, honey, you won. Uh-huh. Took the boys to the cleaners. Oh, how nice. Now I can get that cute hat, new dress, shoes, pay for the hall, new stove, fur coat. Take a trip. Wow. Easy come, easy go.
your step, Wilbur. They're getting wise to you. Hoppers in the weeds. <laughs> Successful angling no longer depends upon fishermen's luck. For today, fishing has become a truly fascinating science. <clears throat> when to fish can be determined by the astrological signs of the zodiac, whose countless stars and planets control all the tides of the Earth's waters. Hence, when Neptune enters the constellation of Piscis, or fishes, 
the cosmic vibrations create in the fish an uncontrollable desire to bite. When the Earth enters this celestial orbit, it too falls under the powerful influence of these vibrations. Now, let us observe the effect of this phenomena on man. Dormant within his bosom slumbers an inert instinct to fish. This desire becomes acute only through bodily contact with the cosmic undulations of piscus or fishes. This creates a mental malady known as fishes febris or fishing fever. During this trans-like period, the uh, angler checks his fishing tackle and succumbs to an overwhelming desire to test his casting skill. A deft flick of the wrist, whip of the pole, the tug of the line, and uh, the angler can easily imagine a fighting fish in a crystal pool. Where to fish? Ah, the beauty of the sunrise or the high rugged mountains the freshness of the early morning dew. The joy of sleeping in the great out of door. The fisherman awakens at the crack of dawn, deeply impressed with his closeness to nature. Ah, to breathe deeply of that pure, rarefied mountain air. The trout. The mountain trout is an alert, intelligent creature. A fighter of the first water, rugged, strong, daring. <coughs> His dauntless fortitude makes him absolutely fearless. <coughs> How to approach the stream? Slip up quietly to a shrub or bush, and don't let the fish see you coming. <laughs> oh, now you've done it. Once the pool is disturbed, the fish can never be enticed to bite. fishing. The fly fisherman must know how his tackle and other objects appear to the fish. Therefore, through the eyes of the fish, we view the angler, the tempting fly, and uh, study carefully the reaction of the fish. <laughs> The lure is scientifically designed. When dropped into the water, the resulting optical illusion creates a very realistic effect. the lure, select a spot free from overhanging brush and limb. Swing the arm with a liquid rhythmical motion. Straight as an arrow, the lure spins over the water to land lightly into that deep purple pool. sings and the poor fish is really hooked. Lake fishing, immortalized in the words of the ancient bard. Quote, 
Upon yon lake's calm, placid breast, the angler plies his yaw to tempt the smile from Lady Luck, where'er his hook may fall. Unquote. Oh, oh, a strike! A strike! Oh, boy, what a whopper! Look at that pole, Ben! Hear that real shame! Don't give him any slack! Play him! Play him! Keep cool now, don't get excited! Here he comes! There he goes! What a player! Keep cool! Use your head, man! Use your head! Keep your eye on him! is so justifiable as that of a, a successful official. special equipment, a college covered with ivy, a coliseum or stadium filled to overflowing with a hundred thousand rabid, wildly cheering fans, great armies of vendors, managers, mascots, photographers, sports writers, doctors, elaborate brass bands, assorted coaches, old grads, scores of Annie Oakleys, and two teams resplendent in brilliant uniforms create a riot of color and atmosphere unequaled by any other game on earth. Now, the object of the game is to pass the ball over the goal line of the opposing team by hook or crook. The 11 men on either team, two ends, and that's how the game is played. Now, the teams line up for the kickoff. The referee blows his whistle, and the game is on. It's a long, high, end over end kick over the end zone into the arms of, uh, of uh, Swivel Hip Smith, that great All American star, triple threat scat back. Look at him go, they can't touch him. He can really carry the mail, that boy. Look at that open field running. Look at that straight arm. He's away, and he's over for a touchdown. Well, it isn't often you see this happen. 105 yards to a touchdown on the opening kickoff. Now, here's the try for the extra point. And the kick is good. And the score is 7 to nothing. Here comes Swivel Hip Smith out of the game. Listen to that cheer. The coach is saving Smith. He's not taking any chances with his star player. Back to the game. Taxidermy Tech kicks off to Anthropology a and But the ball is fumbled, yes, and now it's Taxidermy Tech's ball. They go into a huddle. The quarterback or field general looks over the defense and decides which number to call. They come quickly out of the huddle. The line shifts into position. The quarterback barks his signals. The backfield shifts. The ball snapped. The quarterback fakes it to the halfback, gives it to the fullback. The front pile drives to set it for a gain of eight yards. And that quarterback's a smart boy. Oh! All right, all right. Signals. 18, 29, 47, 63, 54, 99. The team's working like a well-oiled machine. A double wing back to the right from an unbalanced line. A man in motion. The halfback's got it off tackle, and he's smeared for a nine-yard loss. What a dumb quarterback. To the spectator, football may appear rather rough at times, but in reality, it's a character-building game. All right, taxidermy's ball. Third down and 11 to go. DeGrotti has the ball. He gives it to Gershman. No, Sibley's got it. There it goes to right. Oh, no, it's a fake. A hidden ball. Crisscross, cross buck, end around, double lateral, razzle dazzle, spinner, split buck. And he's in the clear. Uh oh, there's a penalty on the play. It's against Taxidermy Tech. One, two, three, four, five. 15 yards for unnecessary roughness. Well, it's fourth down and 26 to go for TNT. The quarterback is worried. The coach radiates confidence. The quarterback decides to kick. It's, it's blocked. No, he got it away. It's a high spiral. 
The safety man's under it. He muffed it. It's a loose ball. Number 48's in fast. Oops. Butterfingers. Moose Williams got it. He had it. Now DeGrotty missed it. Seaburn boots it to the 50. There it goes to the 35. It's next ball. No. Wow. Right. Wrenched it away, and it's AM's. No, everybody dropped it. Nobody's got it. 100 yard fumble, a free ball over Dex's goal line, but here comes Nordberg. He's recovering the old pork skin for a six. What a play. The teams line up for the try for the extra point. There's the kick, and it's blocked. Anthropology AM receives, and they're nailed on the 25 yard strike. What's the quarterback going to call? It looks like a pass. It is a pass. Geronimo fades back. Cocks his arm, rifles a bullet pass into the flat. It's intercepted by Anthropology. Here's the 40-yard marker, the 30, the 20, the 10, and he's over for a touchdown. There's the try for the extra point. It's good, or, or is it? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and... There's the gun ending the half. Well, here's one for the books. The officials put their heads together. They reach their decision. And the score at the end of the half, taxidermy seven, anthropology 12 and one half. the players are allowed to relax. The coach, who is a master of psychology, points out their weaknesses. To prevent overconfidence, he shames them. Arouses their school spirit, a man of many moods, now threatening, now pleading. A saint, a devil. He has varied and subtle ways of appealing to their sympathy. Now get out there and fight! Back on the field, the second half's about to start. Smith's going in. Listen to that cheer. There's the kick. Swivel hips is under it. A host of anthropologists close in, but he breaks away. 10, 20, 30. Look at him go. 40, 50. They can't stop him. Listen to that crowd. 60, 70, 80. Look at that straight arm. He's in the clear. 90, 95, and he's over for a... Wow! He's hit and hit hard. This is a real blow to the coach. They're taking Smith out. It's a tough break for the team. They're working on swivel hips. Smith. Tech is snowed under by a wave of tackle. Coach is feverishly trying to revive Smith. Time is running out, and taxidermy is up against a stone wall. Desperately, they work an old swib. Only time for one more play. Look at Smith on his feet. He's going in. The crowd goes wild. Anything can happen. The team's fired up. Here's the play. Smith's got the ball. He's away. Look at that <laughs> blocking. <laughs> Smith reverses the field. They're clearing the way. Not a man on his feet. Smith cuts back. The crowd is hysterical. It's Smith, tight roping down the sideline. Smith breaks into the clear, but look, there's an anthropology man on his feet. One second to go. What a game, and here comes a tackler. Run, Smith, run. Smith's tired, having trouble with the ball. The NM man is gaining. He leaves his feet. Look out, look. And there's the final gun, and Smith wins for taxidermy tech by half a point. To the coach goes the real credit. It's his clear thinking and calm, level-headed reasoning that makes football the great game it is today. Contrary to popular belief, golf is not a waste of time. The transforming of city dumps, vacant lots, and civic eyesores into beautiful greens and fairways more than justifies the existence of the game. Out in the green open fields where a man can get away from it all. Happily, the golfer chooses his club. The modern golfer comes standard equipped with a set of scientifically matched and balanced clubs. 
a T is used to support the ball. The interlocking grip is extremely scientific. The club is held loosely betwixt the thumb and forefinger of the right hand. Place the left hand, palm open, facing away, then slide the right hand below the left. Now flex the thumb and close the palm while moving the index finger over the lower thumb. Once this grip is mastered, the golfer is in a position to hit the ball, which is the object of the game. The interlocking grip gives the golfer a virtually unbreakable hold on the club. This is a divot caused by an incorrect swing. And now let us analyze the correct swing by reducing the figure to its simplest form. This diagrammatical figure clearly shows the symmetrical design created by the path of action. Note how the golfer completes the stroke with an easy, graceful follow-through. This isn't as easy as it looks. Perfect form requires delicate coordination of the hands, feet, arms, legs, elbows, nose, and mind. And, oh yes, always remember, keep your eye on the ball. The putt is the simplest of all strokes. The ball is simply hit from here to here. However, better golfers leave nothing to chance. They consider all the elements, wind velocity, humidity, rotation of the earth, time of day, temperature, drift indication, lay of the land, trajectory angle, longitude, latitude, and a bit of mental calculation. This routine completed, the putt can now be made with confidence. Missing a putt is very aggravating. The approach shot, or chip to the pin. A ball incorrectly hit is known as a hook, slice, flub, dub, or something which causes the ball to curve in flight and usually results with the ball landing in the rough. The golden rule of golf is to play the ball where it lies. The golfer is sometimes tempted to remove his ball to a slightly better position. This is strictly forbidden. Always play the ball where it lies. Even in a sand trap, the golfer must obey that ironclad rule to play the ball where it lies. This may prove a bit trying at times, but that is why golf is known as the character building game. To lose one's temper on the golf links denotes a weakness of willpower. Golf develops a man's best qualities. He learns restraint, poise, dignity, and self-reliance. Always play the ball where it lies. <laughs> Playing the ball where it lies becomes an obsession. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
covered the course, we come at last to the 19th hole, where we join our friends in the proverbial bull session that ends a perfect day of golf. Somewhere within the crowded confines of the big city, there roams a lonesome man in need of companionship. But for every friendless man, there is always a dog, man's best friend. Fate, in its peculiar manner, brings these two together. A one-man dog and a one-dog man. feeling of understanding springs up between them, held together by a common bond. Soon the puppy becomes accustomed to his new surroundings and makes himself at home in his master's house. Oh, I've got you! The out of doors is the best place to teach the dog his parlor tricks, and the best method is by illustration. He should be shown how to heal. Heal? How to sit up. Sit up. To roll over. Roll over. Lie down and point. Like this. Point! <laughs> Dumb dog. When the pup has learned to obey these simple commands, he should be rewarded with a biscuit for his efforts. Take a bite, Bowser. Yow! A man and his dog, each for the other. Here, pal, shake hands. After months of training, the young pup has grown into a one-man dog. The proud master enjoys a leisurely stroll with his pet. My, what a handsome dog. Oh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Heel, Bowser! Heel! I said heel! Stop! Whoa! Heel! <laughs> Bowser! Heel! Get off! Sit up! Roll over! Get up! Come on, roll up! Get up! Roll! There is nothing closer in affection than a man and his dog. 
the happy dog greets his master's return from a hard day's work. <laughs> ah, the comfort and companionship of dog and master. Sometimes the neighbors drop by for a friendly chat. Hey, Keith, your dog busted my fence. I'm going to sue. Scared my chicken. You owe me plenty. Who's going to pay for my wife? Pour up my lawn. Pay up or else. Eat my fruit. And keep that dog home. The kindly master cannot count the cost in money for the privilege of owning a pet. <laughs> With a warm feeling of security, the master steps out for the evening. Good night, Bowser. Zippity doo, da zippity yay. My oh my, what a wonderful look. Bowser! Out! Get, 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 get! And stay there! Slightest noise is apt to arouse the watchful dog into instant action. Bowser! It's me! It's me, Bowser boy! Remember? Speak to me, Bowser! Ow! Doggedly, the pet protects his master's house, almost as if it were his very own. The dog... of the average man is rapidly facing extinction. Truly, the average man is a creature of strange and unorthodox habits. Take the case of Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker lives in a quiet, respectable neighborhood. He is a typical average man, considered a good citizen and of average intelligence. He is a kindly man. Courteous, punctual, and honest. Good morning, Mr. Walker. Good morning to you, Mr. Geef. Lovely day. Mr. Walker wouldn't hurt a fly, nor step on an ant. He believes in live and let live. Mr. Walker owns a motor car and considers himself a good driver. <laughs> but once behind the wheel, a strange phenomenon takes place. Mr. Walker is charged with an overwhelming sense of power. His whole personality changes. Abruptly, he becomes an uncontrollable monster, a demon driver. Mr. Walker is now Mr. Wheeler, a murderer. Hey, Keith, watch where you're going, stupid! 
Hey, do you think you're on the whole road? Hmm. Of course I own the road. My taxes pay for them. I voted for road bonds. I paid for the roads. And I'll use them. <laughs> Nice music. Hey, get over, you road hog! Oi, oi. Signals. Oh, 30 seconds gone from your life. Gee whiz! Oh, dear me! Didn't bust it! Oh, wanna race, do they? Well, they ain't gonna get ahead of me. The motorist pot of gold. Not everyone has a spot to park it. <laughs> Deprived of his protective armor, Mr. Wheeler, motorist, becomes Mr. Walker, pedestrian. Of a pedestrian crossing the street, it has often been said, step in where angels fear to tread, or... A friend in need is a friend indeed. Where there's a will, there's a way. Mr. Walker gains the haven of his car with the knowledge of how the other fellow feels, except once behind the wheel, Mr. Walker reverts to form and again becomes Mr. Wheeler, motorist. Mr. Wheeler, you've broken your toy. But let this be a lesson, Mr. Wheeler. Drive safely. Play fair. Give the other fellow a break and... Ah, shut up! 